Hello, I'm La Bruja. Hello. <laughs> I'm La Bruja, and uh, I'm here with my co-host Dave. Hey, hey. And we have a very, very special guest, Mr. Steve Ignorant. Yes. That's me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you look great, by the way, Steve. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. I, I want to start off by really thanking you for taking the time out to talk to us because I know you have a pretty busy schedule. Um, well, it's only busy in a way that um, obviously because of the, uh, the COVID thing, um, yeah. it's all been like this sort of stuff. Um, and uh, it's it, it, and because where I live is right in the boondocks, I think you call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, the, 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 the signal is like, um, I mean, our, um, our uh, internet went down last week and it's really clapped around here. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just like um, difficult for people. So I'm sorry about all of the, the amount of time it's taken to do this, um, but it was just all these different things, you know. But uh, no, thanks for having me on. So, you know. Oh, no, I, highly understandable. In this day and age we live in right now, nothing is, I mean, you can't count on anything. Even these interviews are, you know, they're, you just never know with everything going on right now. It's, things change from yeah. day to day so fast, so. Yeah. So um, while we're on the subject of COVID, let's just start with that. How are things going on over on your side of the pond, so to speak? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, no, seriously, the information we're getting um, from our so-called government um, is so, you just don't know what you can or you can't do. Um, you yeah. can go out and meet people um, and you can go to a pub uh, and come in, you know, as long as you're one meter apart and you can talk with uh, maybe, um, am I loud enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you can sort of chat. Um, you can't stay overnight with friends unless they're your family. Uh, if you sit inside the pub, it's uh, two people's table. You can go to a restaurant um, or something. But if, uh, you, if, you, if you walk down the street, uh, some streets have got one-way arrows, um, yeah. so you have to follow the directions. Uh, but yeah, if you, um, when you come in a shop, you have to wear a mask. Yeah. No, oh, I don't mind doing, except it, except it sleeves me glasses up sometimes. But I'll Yeah, exactly, it. exactly. Well, I've got exactly. a little tip for anybody who wears glasses, and, um, and it works, um, sort of. Um, um, just on the inside of your glasses, just get a tiny little dab of uh, washing up liquid and just smear it on the inside uh, with a tissue and put it on and that will stop this. Um, it's what motorcyclists use to stop their visors steaming up. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, you, you know what? You know, I, I have that problem so bad with my, my glasses getting steamed up. Yeah, because you're breathing up and it's like, I can't yeah. see. <laughs> what am I going to I'm going to stop them. <laughs> exactly. I, I work in the medical field and sometimes I'm drawing someone's blood um, but granted, I'm wearing a nice, a mere vegetarian, <laughs> lovely. Yeah. I'm wearing one of those N95 <laughs> masks, but and it shouldn't seep through. But once in a while, it will, and it's like, oh, this isn't. I, you know, I'm trying to poke someone in the vein, and it's like, whoosh, it steams up. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, right, but that's gonna that's gonna make everyone want to go to get a like in tetanus jab or something, isn't it? Yeah. Well done for that, Diane. <laughs> really, thank, thank you for the confidence. That's really... Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you, that, for, thank you for the tip. That, that, oh, sorry to interrupt, but that fucker's wearing glasses, right? Putting that fucking thing near me. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so you had COVID prior to the, the pandemic, you actually had a lot going on for yourself. You were actually supposed to be coming here to the United States to tour. Yeah. And that's still going to happen, though, but next year, right? Maybe? Yeah. Ho exactly. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem is, sorry, Dave. Um, oh, it's all right. Go ahead. Is, yeah. Um, the problem is that um, over here, we're, uh, because it's been relaxed, um, all very good. Um, but there are some people who don't quite understand the meaning of that. It's like still be sensible. Um, so there's more, there's more, there's we're getting new close downs now. Um, so it's you know, and I think what I'm really 
shitting myself. It was, sorry, what I'm getting scared about is that there'll be another huge spike yeah. and that will put next year out. Um, if that happens, you know, I that's really frightening. Um, yeah. So we, we just wait to see. But hopefully, yeah, uh, next, uh, will it be next year? No, actually, next year will be Europe. Um, we'll try and cram it all into one year, but I doubt it because I've got to go for work work visas and stuff from uh, the American Embassy and all this stuff that can take fucking ages. Um, we've got to see what airlines are running, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it might be the year after. So we're not talking 2000, 2020, 221. We're talking 222 maybe to come to the States. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But by that time, hopefully your side of the pond would have cleared. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, that's... Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> that's the big hopeful. In the but, state, uh, Steve, in the state I'm in, they, I just heard a specialist last night say that one in every five persons have the virus in the state I'm in. One in every five. That's like, God, I live with, I have five people in my house right now. <laughs> one of us got it, so, you know, it's crazy. Quick, get a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before we move on to your future stuff, I wanted to ask you really quick, how was your last time here in the U.S.? Because I missed your show in Los Angeles at the uh, Henry Fonda Theater. I missed that show, which I wanted to go really bad, but I wasn't in the state. How was that last tour here in the States? I think it was like three years ago, I would say. No, it was 2010 when you came out. Um, I actually met you. You and Giz. Uh, that long ago? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. But I met you in Pomona at their Pomona show at the Fox Theater. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the last time that he came out here. It was 2010. Oh my God. I thought it was the, just, just within the last three or four years. Yeah. Wow. It's been 10 years, huh? That yeah. Was, wow. That was a great tour. Yeah, that um, that was that was really brilliant. But um, I mean, uh, see, I tend to get slightly confused because uh, of my age and we I all do with this. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I came out a couple of years ago with Paranoid Visions and did oh, some, uh, did some stuff with with some yeah. crass songs in it. Um, but no, the Last Supper tour, which you're talking about, uh, no, that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I mean, just absolutely fantastic. You know, yeah. Um, and I still think back to it, you know, because everyone, um, everybody was just so accommodating, you know. I mean, it was a real sod to bloody uh, get it together. Again, the work visas. Um, but um, no, it, it was absolutely fantastic, you know, to, uh, just, and, and people couldn't believe, and neither could I actually, um, that, I, you know, I turn up at these big, like the Fox Theatre, yeah. <laughs> which is a big place, and I'd be at the bar. <laughs> Are you Steve Bigman? I'm like, yeah. How could I buy you a beer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, just help knock yourself out. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's awesome. Steve, why, that is Steve, why aren't you backstage? Because I want to see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you did. You you were playing some big venues. I was following somewhat loosely that tour um, where you were playing. And yeah, all the venues you were playing were, were all really large. Yeah. And, and just yeah. right after that, you and Penny and Eve, when you came back to, to England, you went back to England, you guys actually performed together. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's actually, come. we have an expression in England, um, something will come and bite you on the ass, I think you say it over there, but we say ass because <laughs> we're bosh. Um, but yeah, that came to bite me on the ass because the whole idea of like, right, the last supper, that's the last time I'm doing crash songs, that's it, because I want to concentrate on the new thing, Slice of Life. Yeah. Um, so, and the whole idea being, I'll film it so people will know if they come to Slice of Life, you ain't going to see crash songs, right? That's the idea of it. So me and my big fucking mouth at Shepherd's Bush, it's on DVD. I can't believe I'm never going to do this again. Blah, 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 blah. What am I fucking doing? <sighs> Mate, you know, I sound like, oh God, it's like when I was, well, this is the, the last, last sort of thing. I ain't going to do that. Don't worry about it. So... This one's called Ignorant Talk, so I'll be totally ignorant to any criticisms or anything like that. Um, and um, and also someone said to me, it was very strange because um, I did the last supper tour at um, Shepherd's Bush where Penny Rambo and Eve Libertine performed. Amazing and Lifeboat crew came on and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, but I was talking to someone in my local pub and they'd been to see Bob Dylan back in the fucking seventies or something. Yeah. And uh, and he, he went, um, so you're never going to do your crash songs again? And I went, no. And he went, well, that's a bit unfair, isn't it? I went, why? And he went, well, I went to see Bob Dylan expecting him to play Blowing in the Wind or, you know, uh, Masters of War or something. And he said he didn't do one. And I went, I'm so deflated. And he said, how would you feel if you went to see David Bowie and he didn't do Ziggy Stardust or he didn't do um, uh, Moon Age Daydream or he didn't do yeah. Sweet Thing? And I was like, oh, shit, you've got a point there. So... I sort of shot myself in the foot. So, um, <laughs> and, but I, you know, also just to sort of skate around it. Look, if people want to listen, if people still want to hear it, um, and if those songs are still relevant, which I think they are, and if I can still do it, um, then I might as well do it. Because what the fuck else do you want me to do? You know, sweep up leaves in the garden or, I don't know, write a fucking book. So, sorry, I've started swearing now. I beg your pardon. You're going to have to bleep a lot of stuff out here. Yeah. No, oh, it's, no, it's fine. It's you can fine. say whatever you want. You, you can cuss. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, um, you know, how you were saying last time's these these songs, but honestly, the, the lyrical content of all those songs, they make more sense now. Do you? I feel, but maybe, do you feel like they make more sense now than they did 40 years ago? Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's the, that's in one way, that's the shame of it. Uh, yeah. it's the, that's yeah. the pity about it because it, you know, you'd think, you know, I would have moved on, you know, uh, but we haven't, we have in certain, I mean, okay, in England, you can go into any pub or and you can get a vegetarian stroke vegan meal. It's moved on that far. Yeah. Um, we're just about getting the um, uh, the uh, transgender sort of uh, the what's it? I can't remember what the initials are, but that thing. We're gradually getting that the, the pride thing. Um, we're gradually getting the uh, um, BLM thing, which is what oh. I've been, you know, what I've crash been saying for years. <laughs> you know, you know, um, I won't say the N word on you know thingy, but you know, if you care to take a close look at the way things really stand, you'll see we're all just to the rulers of this land so you know and it's sort of so it makes sense um but you can i mean tonight you can go back and read charles dickens um and it's got um homeless people um the rich and the poor the haves and have nots and that was in 18 whatever this is yeah. the year 2020 and we've still got those and we've still got this skin problem you know yeah, we've still got exactly. this inequality with women and pay uh, mm -hmm. and we've still got idiots in power not only yeah. you lot but us as well look at Fucking twat we've got. Yeah. They're twins. God, I, really, I really want to look like him. <laughs> Boris Johnson, that's such a, you know, I'd love to, if I could have a haircut, I'd love to look like <laughs> Boris Johnson. It would be fantastic, wouldn't it? So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway, change your, change your scene right now. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great, actually. Yeah. But you know, you're, you're so right. I mean, like, me and Dan are both from Los Angeles. And 30 years ago, almost, we had the Rodney King riots. Um, and it, it, nothing's changed. We're in the same exact thing. We're dealing with the same exact bullshit 30 years later in this country. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's very sad, actually. I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's really, it's sad that, the, that, that everything makes sense so much now than ever before. Well, and look at the, um, look at, you know, I'm over your thing, uh, the Native American thing, you know, the First Nations, whatever the term is to use now. I mean, the problems they're going for, we had the same problem here with, uh, they're called gypsies or travellers. You know, yeah. we've still got the same problem. Or we, uh, um, you know, as I say, they're still in England, there's still an inequality uh, with pay with women, because they're still getting less than the men. I but if she's doing the same job as you, what's the difference? I don't sort of, uh -huh. So anyway, yeah. So yes, those songs are still relevant, unfortunately, but there yeah. you go. Yeah. Do you, um, is that inspiring you in, in, in your writings? Still, do you still have that anger? I mean, because I know Slice of Life is more, um, is Yeah, more that's what I was going to ask. What are those? Does that inspire you in your, do you still have that anger, yeah. that spark? No. Yeah, yeah, I do. But what I'm trying to do with Slice of Life is that I'm trying to um, um, bring it up to my age. I'm 62. 
Uh, and there are sort of certain issues I have to deal with now, like that certain toenail that's like, oh, you know, or what's, the, what's this hair doing here? Like, think, you know, um, or when I step up, oh, when I get up, you know, and oh, that, I can't lift my leg high enough. And to the, when I, um, I get free prescriptions now because I'm over 60, um, but the queue to wait for it. And oh, we don't seem to, uh, um, little grumpy things, you know, uh, when the lockdown was on, um, we could go to the supermarket and there's arrows coming this way. And some fucker would come the other way, well, uh, and I was raging, just like, uh, um, so that's why with Slice of Life, I try to address things that, uh, that, um, that are affecting not only me, um, but the audience that came from like in their 50s, you know, even their 40s, like 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, you, if you come to a crash gig, um, certainly in England or a slice of life, you'll see a lot of walking sticks um, and, a lot, you know, people need a chair to sit down. That's, you know, that's the way it is now. Um, so I've got, I want to address those things and uh, the cancer thing. I've had a lot of friends, as we all have, you know, die yeah. from, you know, disappear because of that bloody thing. Never mind it's COVID, what's it? Um, yeah. So they're the issues I'm trying to address, you know, and, and uh, um, that, yeah, when you're 21, like I was once, um, oh, well, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll never make 60, but here I am with a sense of my own mortality uh, because I've lived longer than I'm coming to, which is weird. So it, and it's addressing those things and it can affect you, you know, I mean, I'm not scared of dying, but that thing has got to be addressed as well. It's like, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, how, how the hell can I sing about um, getting out and start a riot on the street at the age of 62, Steve? Are you having a fucking laugh, mate? Jesus Christ, <laughs> you, you can hardly walk. I'm a, yeah, you're quite right. In <laughs> so I, it's those issues with Slice of Life. And, and the, um, I suppose the anger I get now is the, um, is it the, uh, what's it, um, you feel um, impotent yeah. or powerless? You yeah. know, uh, to, to, you know, how long have I got to bang my head against this brick wall till I'm in the wooden box, I suppose, you know, but I'll keep doing it as long as I can. I'll keep doing it. But that's what I'm, you know, that's, that's what I'm trying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, this, oh, I'm sorry, Danny. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Dave. I, this is kind of a silly question, but I got to ask you. So how do, how do you, how does it feel doing the old crass stuff when like now being 62, how does it feel? playing that music, singing the songs when you were, you know, that you wrote when you were a teenager, basically. So how, how does that feel? Um, it, it's very strange because what tends to happen is that I, um, you know, um, I tend to be a bit cynical and I'm like, oh, God, if I can do that again, you know, oh, God, I, what you seriously want me to rehearse, I was a living for fuck's sake, you know, I've been singing <laughs> it for 45 fucking, yeah, but we do it. But the minute we're on stage and do it, Boom, and I see those people singing it along. I see the mouths moving, um, and I'm back into it. And then I sort of blank that out, but I just try and do it the way that I used to do it uh, yeah. when I was a teenager, as close as I can. Um, I, 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 there's no pretense about it, you know. And as much as the audience want to hear uh, uh, and shout those songs, I want to as well. Um, yeah. It's all very well doing the slice of life thing, diddly, but every so often I want to go. You know, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit like an enema, I suppose. It's like, oh, thanks, not for that. But, yeah, but Steve, you've got to do it 25 days back to back on the trot. Oh, for fuck's yeah. sake. Yeah. Right, love, get the emodiums. Christ, this is... <laughs> 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 both, both you and Dave are, are, are singers, you know, frontmen and bands, but me, I'm a true fan. So from a fan's base point, like you, like your band, Crass, really, really inspired me and Absolutely. gave me that push to become an activist. I would not have been an, I started, I, I became an activist when I was like 16 years old, fighting for equal rights, animals' rights. And honestly, it would, if it wasn't for your band, I probably would not have been an activist. And even to this day, I continue to be. And um, I say, I know, I get it, like having to sing those songs over and over for 40 years, but honestly, keep doing it because you're, you're really encouraging people, causing that spark. And it's like, it's that, that, you know, that causes, you know, for things to change, you know, maybe 
Oh, I, I, I do know one kid, one kid, my, my daughter's very first boy, boyfriend, he was also a huge fan and he was a very intelligent guy. He went to school and now he became like a, an attorney, but he's a lobbyist, which a lot of people, there you, go. you know, you know, rage, like they say they're a bad thing, but he's a lobbyist and he actually helped write a law to, to help with, for women's rights. And it's just like, you know, it all goes to back down to to you and the songs that you wrote and that. Absolutely, really absolutely. I mean, when I was a teenager, just just the the it, listening to Crass and the anger and the feel behind your music, just it made me it, it empowered me. I mean, listening yeah. to that in Walkman on a skateboard, it empowered me. So I mean, yeah, it's you've it, done some yeah. amazing. Your body of work is amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people have, have said these things to me and, you know, um, and, you know, I think obviously I can't uh, quite grasp it uh, because I have other things that have inspired me in the same way that, you know, Crash inspired you and lots of other people. Um, for me, it was books, you know, it was um, all writers um, or filmmakers, you know, um, and obviously David Bowie, you know, had a bit to do with oh, it as yeah. well. Um, you know, well, you know, David Bowie, you know, I remember my stepfather saying, oh, Nelly Bowie, what you what you putting that bangle on for? Well, because David Bowie does it, you know, and, um, you know, David Bowie, um, you know, he was the one man who enabled working class kids like me to wear a bangle on a, you'd call them projects, we call, we call them council estates, um, without getting beaten up. Because, oh, you went to David Bowie? Yeah. Um, mind you, the flip side of the coin is I went to a, a football match at West Ham and got fucking punched in the face by a geese with a Ziggy Stardust makeup on. But no, you know, I really sort of appreciate that. Um, um, and that's why I'll always continue to do it because it's not, as I was trying to say before, um, as much as um, the audience are getting it, you know, we're getting off on it. I'm getting, I am as well, because I'm going, oh, fucking hell, yeah. You know, and when we started, um, it was like, you know, I said to Penny, how shall I do it? Because I've never sung before. I shouted down the microphone. And he went, just scream as loud as you can and, and be honest. And I was like, and that's what I've always done. You know, I mean, I remember being in Southern Studios recording. Um, I think it was fe uh, Feeded, actually. And I screamed so loud, my pimples burst. <laughs> 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 um, but um, no, I'll, I'll as long as I can, I'll continue to do it. But you know, um, I'll say this now: when I can't, uh, we've got to find someone else who can carry it on. So you know, I know there's loads, loads of people out there, but it's and I don't. It's funny because I look back and I'm like, well, people keep saying this to me, and 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 I can't think of anyone. And I'm not being big headed or or anything, but I can't think. Well, is it Adam and the Ants? Well, no. Uh, was it the, no. I mean, The Clash inspired me, Sex Pistols, and, the, you know, the Buzz Crocs, I like listening to them. But was that Throbbing Gristle? No. Weren't the same as I feel. The Underground? No. Go back then. Van Morrison? Uh, not Van Morrison, uh, but Jim Morrison and Dalton? No. Yeah. Um, Frank Zappa? Well, he's, he was a bit fucking... Duh, duh. Um, but no, we still don't do it. So, you know... Um, so when in England the sleep of mods came along, I was like, "Fucking okay, hell, I should have done that after crash." Fuck that. So um, you know that's uh, that again. You know once I heard them, uh, but then when I was, um, were crash still going? I went to uh, I went to New York. I think crash was still going. Yeah, we were because I was still um, crash was going. I went to New York uh, and uh, went to Coney Island. And this is 1980 something, and uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Sugar Hill Gang came out oh, of the message. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and people carrying those big things around. So there I'm on Coney Island on the the, the boardwalk. Yeah. yeah. And this 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 family, black family, came past me, um, and I, I was and this music was coming out like, <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck, excuse me, but what what is that?" And they went, "Ain't we the scratching?" I was like. No, well, you know, and I went, no, no, it's uh, where you get the record and you know, <laughs> yeah. fucking hell, or Africa Bambata and that sort of thing. Well, you know, I was like, fuck, because uh, it's rapping and sort of if you listen to a lot of crash stuff, like, um, um, uh, so what? It's like a rap at the end, sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I got into rap, 
And I remember going back to John Lode. I went, John, John, I've got, to do a, I've got to do a fucking rap record. And I always remember John Lode. He went, oh, Steve, it won't last. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're wrong, John. <laughs> but, you know, but, um, but that inspired me too, the, the message from Grandmaster Flash. You know, it was this new thing. I can't get into gangster things. Right. Uh, um, you know, I can't get into that. Um, uh, MC Hammer and all that sort of thing and, and some of it was facile but when it first came out I was totally into it and you know it, sorry I'm waffling on a bit to excuse oh, me but, no no um, continue uh, on, on TV the other night there was a programme about Keith Harry uh, and his graffiti and it had shots of the New York um, um, subway with all the graffiti on it and all the, and then Keith Harry and Keith Harry. but the soundtrack that went with it was spot on and that's how I remember it you know, it was just like yeah. really, that was really inspiring, you know. And plus, what I liked about the um, uh, the rap thing was that um, instead of fighting, out fighting each other, the gangs were actually trying to out dance each other, which is where the body popping and all that sort of the break dancing came from. And that, to me, was like, that's moving forward. Yeah. Really you know, forward. here's an interesting thing. Um, there's actually like some punk bands or punk and hardcore bands that are incorporating rap into their music. There's one band from Russia that we interviewed called Moscow Death Brigade. And right. they're like, they're, uh, they mainly rap. Very but, uh, good, very good album, band, talented. Yeah, their last album, they sound uh, more like, in, kind of like industrial-ish, but it's like weird, they're constantly merging, but they're one band that I can think of on top of my head that is incorporating rap, but they're not doing like the gangster rap. They're talking yeah, about yeah. anti-racism, you know, equality, and you know, speaking against homophobia. It's it's awesome that it's yeah. kind of. I know, Steve. When I think of songs like uh, "Loudmouth" and stuff, you're kind of rapping right there, man. You're breaking yeah. it down. How you know the whole vocal pattern? You're you're like you're rapping right there. So, oh, mate, get get me on the microphone. I'll fucking be there. I ain't no fucking square. I'll do it straight to you. Bah, what do I do? Boom, what's the time? Fucking different to yours, and this is mine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, you were way, way back, you know, in, in the early punk scene in the beginning. And God, Dan, you're trying to make me feel old. Yeah, go on, way, way back <laughs> Wait, in, the I, last, in the last century. You know, I'm, I'm 10 years, I mean, you know, I'm 10 years younger than you. I'm not that much, I'm not that young, you know. It's like, I'm, yeah, we don't need to get into age. I'm 52, I'm gonna be 53, I'm very proud of my age. But, you know, I, I technically I've been in the punk scene for 40 years now, so. But you were back there in the beginning when everything was starting out. And it's like, you're one of the, you know, it's like everyone talks about the Sex Pistols and the Clash. And, and all that. But honestly, like, you're like one of the founding bands that that genre of music is, it's still going on. Like the anarcho punk scene, that's still, oh, yeah. that's still huge. And like. Yeah, we didn't, uh, look, we didn't set out to create that. You know, um, what we did was, um, we could see where the Sex Pistols were going. Don't get me wrong, because I thought they were a great band, you know, when I first heard right. them, Mate and The Clash as well. When I first saw them, I was like, fuck, you know, yeah. brilliant. You know, I'm, so I'm not taking anything away from them. No. Um, but we could see where they were going, you know, the, the young young people, obviously, record deal. Yeah, I'll do it, you know. Um, thinking they could change things, and they didn't. And we were like, well, fuck it. We're going to do it as far as possible and we won't uh, we'll just stick to our own guns you know and um so what we did was in those days there was no internet you know there was certainly none of this so it was all writing letters or telephones yeah you know, and that's how we used to get gigs and we'd play concerts um in in a um, a shed in somewhere in the north of england that no one would ever go to but people would come you know the first time we'd go there was maybe 15 people the second time there was a hundred you know um but then other bands picked up on what we were doing uh, like rubella ballet uh, um subhumans conflict flux pink indians boys and girls all that kind of thing you know, dirt name 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 you know all that kind of thing and they'd go to these places as well so this network built up in england where you didn't have to go in london you know the big capital to, to perform um, this so this network and then what would happen is like 
uh, like say conflict would come along and uh, and Colin said to me well Steve I'm really in it, man I'm all right so I'm like, well you do that then and we'll do our pacifist bit but you can do the art you can do the sort of hard nut bit and um oh you know um flux what you do oh um you know we actually have called the epileptics then um, but then you know people forget too quickly then you had the poison girls now when the poison girls were playing with crash we used to go on tour together in england uh what pete i'm always meant being at a gig in birmingham in england and this guy and vice of birth was up there playing and this young punk and he went to me fucking hell she's a bit she's a bit old to be doing that isn't she I mean, well, what do you think you're going to be doing at fucking Foley? Right, and that's um, because she was she was singing about being a single mother, um, you know, um, bringing up kids and stuff. Very underrated band, you know. Um, yeah. God, I half miss her. She, and she's very underrated, you know. Um, all about, you know, as we were saying before, but this whole thing which became the anarcho-punk movement, and then out of that came uh, the... Um, the traveling, you know, whatever they were called, I can't remember, but um, Battle of the Beanfield kind of thing, you know, the Rainbow Warriors, not Rainbow Warriors, um, but the the road people, and then grunge and all that sort of thing. And it all came out of that. Um, and it's and people hold us, you know, not just me, but Crash responsible for it. No, it was people making their own decisions who decided to go and do that and actually did more than us in certain ways. You know, yeah, I mean, conflict certainly did more than us about the animal rights thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, bands like Hagar the Womb, um, and, um, who were 15 years old, 15, 60, 16 yeah. years old at the time, trying to sing about women's rights or equality, were out there having sort of bottles thrown and by viral skinheads, you know, yeah. in their 20s. Thanks, lads. I hope you sweet sleep well at night with your beer gut and your bald head, your bastards um 15 year old kids for fuck's sake you know um they're out there doing it um and that's everyone went oh fucking hell you know we'll try these different things and that's it just grew it was organic what yeah. what, what message would you give to today's youth because it's like you know for for up until like just recently um at least here in the states like a lot of people would make fun of the, the current generation, the millennials, like everyone would call them snowflakes and they were pussies and wusses, you know, whatever. <laughs> but they've really proven themselves and taken it up a notch with us here because of with the protests that have been going on, the, the, the impact. I mean, shit, they made Trump build this crazy ass wall in front of the White House because they infiltrated, you know, it's just like, so for any of, the youth today, because they are angry, they're just equally as Definitely. angry. And they're pretty much screaming the same message that you guys were, were doing 40 years ago. What advice would you give to them so that they can actually make a difference for the future? What would you yeah. what advice would you give them? Bloody hell. Well, um, you really do thought... make a difference. God almighty. Well, what I'd say is like, do what you feel we've got to do but don't cause wanton destruction because that's just devastation. Do it with a meaning, but don't get caught. Yeah. Yeah. And don't hurt anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, unless, um, well, unless someone smacks you around the face and then you smack them back twice as hard, but you know, don't, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't instigate it. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, here in this country, I mean, things are so crazy. I mean, Trump has his secret police now and his uh, secret police force going into the protesters and it's nuts here, man. I mean, our our country is, is I mean, we're falling apart, it feels like, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to coming there. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll inject myself with um, uh, with disinfectant first, and, uh, and and then I'll take that drug that apparently works, Donald. Yeah. But the, the medical end. people are saying it doesn't. Um, so I'll take that, and um, yeah, with no work permit, and say I'm here to play and make money. <laughs> <laughs> On a good note, if you take that drug, you won't get malaria. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. No. <laughs> Nobody needs malaria. No, <laughs> I'll probably, I'll, yeah, malaria. but I'll probably grow tits on my back. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, it'd be good to dance with, you know. 
I hope your elbows are double jointed. <laughs> yeah, that'll make me want to come and see you play even more, Steve. <laughs> Might want to come. But, uh, <laughs> sorry about this, but uh, no, exactly okay. <laughs> yeah, we get we get silly. We we get silly. It's like um, you you know, it's like going off uh, on a different tangent. You actually have a lot of other talents going on aside from from singing you're a sculptor oh that look that was years ago uh, that's yeah. when i lived at dial house um i don't do it so often now I've, I've done a couple um because uh, when i lived at the crash house you know at dial house there was uh it was a farm lived next door to a farm and there was a lot of old telegraph poles uh, that had been cut down and thrown away and i was like oh and I've been reading up about, um, I've been looking at a book about Celtic art and uh, um, the Vikings and stuff. Uh, used to do very simple uh, pole, you know, it'd be a pole, but with a face in it, very simple. And I had two chisels, I had a crescent one and I had a, a flat one. And I thought, well, if they didn't do it with axes or whatever, I'm sure I'll do it with these two, what's it, and, uh, you know, these two chisels. And uh, uh, telegraph poles are pretty soft. And once you cut into it, you get all the, the tar comes out, so you get the grains. So I, did, I always did very simple things, and I moved on, and I moved on, and I've got a new set of chisels, and you know, sort of did this thing. So, but that was years ago. Um, so I was a sculptor. Uh, sometimes I'll fiddle about, you know. Yeah. Is it? So what's what's the other thing I'm? What's the other thing I'm good at then? Uh, I heard you're a puppeteer. That's what I wanted yeah. to hear about. That's oh uh, well, I used to be. I used to be, but um, yeah, well, the thing is that um, the, the characters that I use are made from paper mache, and I made them in 1990, 1992, mm -hmm. uh, so they're very fragile, and I can't use them, so if I was to do it again, I'd have to totally remake the whole thing. Um, Where would you do your, your, your puppeteering at, Steve? Oh, anywhere. Um, I'd just turn up and do it. You know, um, oh, like wow. I used to do. Yeah, it was um, like, um, well, in Victorian times, uh, Punch and Judy, which is what the yeah. puppet show is. Um, I can't explain that, but kids, Google it. You see, oh, yeah, that, that yeah. With, uh, with the uh, two by four. Yes, yeah, um, well, with a slapstick. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's just, that's just two bits of wood, um, very thin, and you can whack it on your, it don't hurt, but it just makes a loud noise. Yeah, that's all it yeah. is. Um, Oh damn! I wish I'd known we were talking about this. I would have gone. Um, but um, in Victorian times, uh, Punch and Judy was exempt from uh, the busking laws, so uh, you could literally turn up and so uh, and do it anywhere, and the police couldn't move you. Of course, laws have changed since when I was doing it. But um, I, t I remember I'd turn up at Leicester Square in London, and it was just turning out time for the pubs and the cinemas and things, and I just sat up and started doing it. And I had this crowd of about 30 people there and uh, a homeless person. Well, I don't know if he's homeless, but a pissed geezer, you know, drunk geezer sitting there for the... And uh, I went, here, mate, do his fuck, take the hat round, can you? <laughs> to get the <laughs> coins. He went, yeah, yeah, And I went, oh, you keep the money, fuck it. But, uh, but a copper came along and uh, and he said, uh, well, I'm going to have to move, you know, excuse me. And I was like, what? You know, so I had to stand up in the break, the magic of it. Um, uh, and he said, you've got to have to move on. So I just got the puppet, all right, a uh, uh, punch, and I went, ladies and gentlemen, this policeman wants us to move on. Should we do it? And the whole crowd went, no. And the cop went, how long are you going to be? I went, 10 minutes. He went, all right, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did um, I did um, go with an entertainment agency. Um, good money, but I hated it because I'd be going into rich people's houses to entertain their children mm. who'd already had the clown, the food, this, that, whatever, the bouncy castle. And the last thing I want to see is a sort of Victorian puppet show, you know, um, and I hated every second. So that's when I jacked it in and I stopped it. But, um, yeah. We, here in the city I live in, in the, the Bay Area. In what, the, San Francisco, yeah? Yeah. So, and where are you? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, in a, where, where are you, Dave? I'm in uh, Tucson, Arizona, actually. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. Desert. So we, right. we actually have a place called Fairyland, and it's um, it's like fairy tale theme, but they actually have a Punch and Judy show there. Oh yeah. There. So if you ever come up here, 
you want to check it out, <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> I will. All right, I will. That's a, that's a date. Right, yeah. That's a date. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you're just, you're just a, a man of many talents. Yeah, well, the thing, the, well, the Punch and Judy thing, um, it just sort of made sense because Crash had finished and um, and, I thought, and I did the classic thing and I was like, well, what the fuck should I do now? Because, you know, Penny Rambo was writing a book or something, G was doing the artwork and the others were doing whatever they were doing and there's me. All I've done is scream down a microphone, what the fuck am I going to do? Go back to a supermarket? <laughs> fuck that. Um, so I thought, I, I know, I'll do, a, I'll do a solo acoustic album. Right, and what should I do it on? Right, don't laugh. But um, I was like, I know, I'll do it on Jack the Ripper because <laughs> I've been reading about Jack the Ripper. Well, thank fuck, someone showed me a, a film called, um, um, oh, what's it called? Hello, Cleveland, Spinal Tap. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, because there's a bit in it where it's all see Jackie E's and all. I was going to do that. I was like, thank fuck, I've seen that because that's <laughs> so. <laughs> and I thought, what should I do? I know I'll write a I'll write a um a, um a, a sort of album about Punch and Judy and the whole thing. Little did I realize I didn't realize that you can't do it uh, because the puppet show is what it is. Uh, you can't change it. Um, that's the thing about it that uh, I've seen performers uh, or professors as they're called um, try to make it like Margaret Thatcher or Ronald Reagan, but the minute you make it political, it don't work no more. It's got to be that bizarre, weird, yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's got to be the audience participation too, you know. Um, so, uh, but I didn't realize that Punch was um, in, he was a working class hero and he always wore red and black mm -hmm. and his colors. Yeah, seriously, yeah, not joking. Um, and um, he was a hunchback cripple who would cheat the hangman into his own noose and would, would hit the copper, or hit the policeman, and not get arrested for it and would get away with it. Uh, and in fact, in fact, um, in Victorian times, Punch and Judy was for adults, not children. Yeah. It weren't until mm. the trains arrived and, the, you know, went down to the seaside towns and then it was, it's got softened down with the crocodile and all these sort of bullets. And, you know, anyway, so that's why I got into it because it was, uh, you know, he's just a roaring, drunk, crippled, hunchback, fucking brilliant geezer who won't take shit from anyone. Yeah. So it reminds me of someone. Can't think who, but... Um, <laughs> And probably several people. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> um, and then you also wrote a book. Yeah. Autobiography. Are Are you planning on writing? Are Are you writing another book now, or are you planning on write, doing more writing another? Well, book? Uh, I'm just. Uh, we're just reprinting uh, the autobiography, so that'll be on available again because people say oh, I can't fucking find it and uh, oh some fuckers selling it for three hundred dollars in America and oh, don't fucking buy it then you know Jesus um is so, it is it revived at all Steve the new edition is it revived or is it just the same edition from it's it's the same it's just yeah it's the same edition um but I'm funny enough you should say that but um Matt Worley who because I did another book called references which is all my lyrics uh the original lyrics and so I explain all the songs I wrote. Um, I'm meeting him next week and uh, he's just going to sort of interview me for the next um, autobiography, which will be from the start of Slice um, onwards uh, with a oh, little cool. bit of history. So it's going to sort of continue it. Um, so yeah, I'm working on it. So awesome. yeah. That's yeah. going to be cool. That's going to be really cool. Look forward to that. I've been trying to find the current book and, and again, like he said, I can't, I can't find it anywhere. It's like, uh, we'll just wait and we'll get a copy to you. Don't just wait and we'll get copies to you. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, no problem, mate. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. And, uh, Will it sign? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> well, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Definitely. <laughs> Have a pin right here, please. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> so, um, with Slice of Life, um, I mean, you were going doing the sort the solo tour of doing craft songs, but slice of life. Where, how is? I mean, obviously the pandemic affected that. Where, where do you? What's next for that? Once all this is is over. You well, um, the slices um, are actually going to be doing the craft songs with me. Okay. So, and we've got the drummer from Paranoid Visions, Jay East, as nice. we say in England, yeah. East Mustard. 
Um, he's like a fucking Mexican he's a fucker. I, I have that record. Yes. God, you Fuck. can't speed him up. You know, sometimes you're in a song on stage, Dave, right? And it's like, oh, this is a bit slow. So you, you can sort of go speed. You can go like this yeah. to the drummer. Because yeah. he's wearing these thick fucking glasses. He can't <laughs> see you anyway. But he will not fucking move from that. If he's got that, right, you want it this speed? That's what it's going to be. All the way, that's it. Boom. It's like a fucking metronome. You fucker. It's like, <laughs> oh. So anyway, I'm using him. Um, but what's next to the slices is that we're waiting. I mean, unfortunately, a couple of them live in Manchester and they've just had a local lockdown up there. So there's a little spike of the COVID thing going on. Yeah. So, um, but we're planning to meet up um, in a few weeks time up in Manchester and do a, a rehearsal in Bolton uh, in a friend's uh, mill uh, factory. Um, uh, and uh, so, yeah, we, we're going to, gonna do that but um yeah so the craft so, are they gonna be acoustic what the slice or the crass ones the the slice if you do the i mean i thought i'm sorry i may have misunderstood that you're doing crass songs with slice yeah but no i'm doing the crass songs but we've got a drummer it's gonna be all electric it's gonna be oh, like okay okay yeah you're doing no no it's gonna be full of, no i'm gonna be fucking acoustic I can be fucking acoustic <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're doing like you're doing two different two different things. You're doing Steve Ingram and Slice, Slice of Life, and you guys are doing periodically yeah. tours, right? For 2021. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, guys so are doing a Scotland call, or what is it, Scotland call? Yeah, we're doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing all that. that that's yeah. the plan, you know, um, that's what we're gonna do. So, um, yeah, um, so that's what we're doing. So, awesome. you know, so, but yeah, just to, re, just to, you know, so people don't get put off, but yeah, it's gonna be the full electric. Um, our version of what Crest did uh, with drummer, you know, with, with um, speakers and all that sort of thing. It's not going to be acoustic with the Crest stuff. Okay. Um, but the slice of life is acoustic. So, yeah. yeah. Nice, man. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. If um, anybody wants to purchase any of your music, anything that you put out, do you yeah, have give me the fucking Give me the fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Where can we where can we give you the money? <laughs> what, what website can we give you the money? <laughs> I'll just buy me a kiss then, or buy me a beer. <laughs> buy me a beer. Call it quits. <laughs> <laughs> where where can if anyone wants to purchase any of your music or um, anything like that, where can they do that? Uh, um, 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 Steve Ignant. Hang on. Um, uh, Steve Ignant official, I think it is, isn't it? Uh, I, on your Facebook, or you have a website? Yeah, well, yeah, so this is the problem. Yona deals with all that side of it because I've me and this sort of computery thing. I have no idea. That's why I'm not touching it. Yeah, the minute I touch that thing, it's going to go all blue or it'll go <laughs> off. It, I've got this thing, right? so yeah. but yeah, it's the Steve Ignant official or um. Yeah, look on Facebook or Instagram. I think it's on there as well. So there's yeah. links to it and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, awesome. it's, it's, it's available. That's awesome. Is there any last words you'd like to tell your fans? Anything before we wrap this up? Well, either the wallpaper goes or I do. <laughs> no, that's quoting Oscar Wilde. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, um, look, stay safe um, and... Um, you know, as I say, whatever you're doing, don't get cold. Take it easy, but take it, Woody Guthrie. Um, and um, it's all going to be all right one day. It's, it's, we're going to be all right. You know, as long as we're sensible, be all right. Um, that's it. You know, I've got no words of advice of how to live your lives. You've got to fucking live that. I can't. Um, that's it. It's been really nice talking to you. You're, you're, I, I really, enjoyed it. you're a really nice guy, man. Thanks a lot, Steve. This yeah. is to you, buddy. Thanks a lot. Cheers. I'm almost done with my but cheers. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thank oh, you. Oh, and so kids, much. if you're drinking and driving, make sure you've got a car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and don't grow tits on your back, whatever you do. But you're great, but you're great fun to dance with. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. Trust me, somebody that that's trust you. That's, that's got them on the front end. I don't think they'd be very pleasant on the back end. <laughs> no, but for dancing, 
Not, no, no. Exactly. I Good for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I it's. it's but it, I'm 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 so glad this has been such a serious, in-depth philosophical. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got deep. They never are. They never are. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fucking. It's been great, isn't it? <laughs> yes, especially when I'm drinking in the morning. <laughs> oh, oh bud. <laughs> no, you know what? This this world needs some laughter and smiles right now, man. That's what I look at it. Yeah. This is Absolutely. Too much, too much to be angry about. Way too much right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, yeah so, take time out. Yeah. 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 But, All right. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Um, you know, uh, again, uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, you, you just released some beats, right? Some oh. You just, didn't you just release uh, some beats? Like that people could download for free? Do you still, is that still available? Oh yeah, 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 but, uh, right. yeah, yeah. Um, you can download, um, I don't know how you get onto it. Um, you'd have to fish around for that. It's like the um, feed of the five thousand, isn't it? Yeah, you can you can re uh, you can redo the feed of five thousand and put whatever you want to do it. You know, yeah, with it. Um, oh, awesome. yeah, this, and you yeah, these people do it down. You can download it for free, and you just do this thing, and it's like you know, if you not uh, because I've had stuff sent to me, Steve. I've just done a remix of I Was Living. Yeah, that sounds quite good. But people do it on their phones, everything. Uh, the idea is that you do a remix of it for free. Um, uh, get in touch with uh, one little, they're not called one little Indian, one little independent. Um, and uh, and the, it will be like a bit like the uh, bullshit detectors where um, the ones they choose will go on vinyl eventually. Yeah, because you the idea of it. There's a, re a vinyl that was just released of people remixing. Yeah, but um, yeah, but that's that. But um, that that's the uh, the thing with two well-known people. Not that I ever heard of them, but you know, apparently. Um, but what I really hope is that it will be like the bullshit detector, uh, yeah. where you'll have um, like maybe um, a minute of each track of uh, a different. And if you, oh, you know, um, and they'll do a link if you want to hear more of this. Uh, come to my website, whatever it is, yeah. so you can click on that. Um, but I just hope it's not, um, I want it to be people who do it very simply. Uh, it's not got to be people who go in studios and all that sort of thing. It's got yeah. to be uh, the people just from the street um, who've just got two um, two sticks, two chopsticks and, uh, and a, a saucepan lid for drums. Yeah. And that's what I want it to be, you know, so yeah. it, it's, it's, um, look, you know, as Crass quoted, uh, punks to people's music, and I don't care where it's from. And um, and as far as I'm concerned, all Crash's music is for all of us. So if you want to do it, you know, apart from the majors, because I'll be after you with a fucking army, because I know a lot of people, I warn you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, if whatever, you know, you fuck, if you think you'll do better than I did, you fucking do it. Nice, man. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. Yeah, right. I saw it on your Facebook page where they could download that for free. Absolutely. Mix. Yep. You're encouraging people to mix in. I sent it to my daughter, who's a, a, a DJ. Right. Um, she grew up with punk music, obviously, from her parents. But, um, you know, all kids have to rebel against their parents. So she doesn't, she's not a punk. But uh, I sent her that, and she was just like, oh, my God, the beat. So... I know she's going to dabble with that for a bit. And I told her, well, submit it and see what happens. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. So I had to, I had to put that in because I forgot about, about bringing yeah. that up. Yes. So. I, 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 yeah. Sorry, uh, Diane, to interrupt me, but um, yeah, I, I did as well, but no, um, any, you know, it's free. You do it for free and just yeah. like whatever you want to do with it. And, um, and even if you even fuck it, even if you don't send it to the, um, What's it called? The official thingy. If you just want to do it and and um, and put it out on your bloody um, Facebook thing, fucking do it. Yeah. That's Let awesome. other people hear it. Let other people yeah. hear it. How, how the fuck are you going to stop them? Um, and why? And why should they be stopped? Because if it's you know what do I what, what would I rather want them to do? Um, big A little A or um, as your goo goo goo. You know. Uh, 
um, or um, I don't know, some um, pop thing. Oh, well, my, my girlfriend's just left me and I don't know what's to do here. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Go to the point, you fucking wuss. <laughs> That's great. That's I'm great. interested to see what the final product of this yeah. is. I really am. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that you're encouraging that art, that people to be artistic. I mean, that's something that's, that, that's awesome. Well, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be fantastic if someone like I don't know, um, Def Leppard, uh, did a cover of whatever, or um, someone like um, I don't know Stormzy did a cover of, or Rihanna did a cover of Shade Women, or um, I don't know what's her name. Uh, I don't want a lot for Christmas. Did 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 did. What's her name? Oh, Mariah Carey. I, oh, Mariah Carey. Imagine if she did shave women or something like that, you know, or, you know, or fuck his women's money. We pay with that, but go on. <laughs> no, that would be. I'd love to see it. That would be awesome. You know what, that, it? that's one of many reasons why you've always, I've always admired you, your, you know, the band Crass, but you in particular is because not dissing on other older punk bands or anything like that you have an open mind. You know, it's like, you don't just box in the talent because there's so much other great music out there. It's, that's not just punk, you know, but there's so much other great stuff out there. And it's just like, and you're open to it. Like you can, you know, because that is the thing right now with uh, today's music is sampling beats from other stuff. And it, to me, it would be awesome if somebody were to sample your beats on a Dre album and it would be big because you guys would get credit where credit's due. And it's like, granted, everyone wants punk to be poor and broke, but I know so many, I have so many friends that are musicians that are poor and broke because punk don't pay the bills. But I would, I want my friends to succeed just like anybody else, like whether they become a, a doctor or, or whatever. It's like, why can't that just be, why can't that be for our, our musicians in the punk scene? Well, and my, my dream is, oh, God, if I, you know, if Nina Simone could do a cover. Oh. I know, yeah. she, but you know what I mean? Or Reefa Franklin or so, fucking hell, uh, Charles Mingus to do a, a Miles Davis, Sonny Rollins, you know, uh, John Cut. Fucking hell, that's what I want to happen, to take it, change it, and do it, and let me hear it. Oh, fuck me, that's... Uh, uh, got goose pimples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what should happen. And, that and would be awesome. And I'm grateful that you're you're open to that. You're just not like yeah. oh, fuck them. You know that's that's awesome that you're open to that. And yeah. That, my, uh, my after we've done this interview, I'm going back in my garage, uh, which is just over there. You can't see it, um, but uh, that's where my um, in lockdown I could stay in, um, and it's like I couldn't go to the pub. I was like fuck it. So I got you know, get the car out. Bollocks, that's mine now, so that's my bar. I've got a stool and a little yeah. thing that I lean on. Uh, that's, and I've got me um, little CD player. So after this, I'm going to listen to Four Tops. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Baby, I need your loving. <laughs> got to have all your loving. Mate, oh, we've got to get together and do that. Fucking oh, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. That would be awesome. I'm, that would be awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, once again, thank you so much. It's, it's and we're gonna, we're going to hold you up to those books, Steve. I, yeah. I want a book. <laughs> look, yeah, yeah. Um, look, uh, definitely stay in touch um, because uh, you know, and then we'll get them to you as soon as they come. We'll get them to you. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. I can't. Like I said, I cannot thank you enough for yeah. just takes taking the time to spend with us. It's 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 such an honor and and. Yeah. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck that. No, it's just been a great laugh. It's just <laughs> been so much, And it's been a, an enjoyable... And it has. It has. God, I, I'm dreading watching the comments. Like, you said blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry I used that word. Yeah. Oh, you said blah, blah, blah. Get a life, you little shit. It's <laughs> <laughs> not I give a fuck at 62. Fuck you. <laughs> and people have been very good. Very, very 
you know, like the people that have been watching our videos, they've been very positive. Well. Yeah, very yeah. Positive. Oh, excellent. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. good. We've been pretty selective as to who we interview, and it's like nothing. I don't think we've ever gotten a negative. No, no. Oh, we haven't. No. Yeah. It's always been up. Good old Diane, you had to put your mouth on it, didn't you? Now we're going to get negatives. <laughs> and we've never had a negative. You watch. <laughs> There'll be people on purpose doing it just to say, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're well, little shits. Wait a minute. Somebody said I was a pussy for smiling too much. On oh, one that's of right. One of our yeah, I, someone said I'm a pussy and afraid of my own shadow because I smile too much. And it's like, motherfucker, I'm going to smile till the day I die. I don't give a shit. But I'll punch you as hard as I fucking could. I guarantee you that with the smile on my face. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we got that. We heard that. And what did they say about you, Diana? They said uh, you were something about your medical training or something. Yeah, someone talked about my medical training. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I really don't care. I've been doing it. I've been in the medical field for 22. In October, it'll be 23 years. So, it's yeah. like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Except when you glass your steam up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right, we gotta end this, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and uh, you know, be sure to go to Steve Ignorant Official on Facebook or Instagram. Definitely. Go check out his page. He's got a lot of interest, great things posted up there. And then also, if you want to download the the beats from a feeding of the five thousand, and then um, purchase any swag, I encourage purchase swag. Yes. Yeah, it's all, it's all official and it's all tip top as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you again. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Steve. We'll keep in touch. Yes. Yeah, definitely. You. Please do. Okay. Love, love to you both. Yeah. Stay safe. All right. Thanks, buddy.